this thing. Wanna what? Okay. Change the colors. Change the color. Oh, that's smart. Okay, well, to change the colors, you just do. Mm -hmm. Right here, the default is white. Yeah, white, yellow, and yellow. Okay, so. It's green. Okay. Um, how many squares can be formed mm -hmm. in the picture? So what's the overall strategy? 25 little ones. 25 little ones. Uh, when you say little ones, you mean... One... I think I think a good way we can say that is they have area 1 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 Why did you say 25? Because I thought it was a 5 by 5 square but uh -huh. it's the toothpicks and marshmallows thing. Yes, exactly. Uh so that has area 1. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's say uh so there are 16 uh 1 by 1. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what's next? Then you have two by twos. Okay. How so many of those? This is a two by two. It's huge. Okay. Let so, two by two. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Okay. And what's next? Three by three. Okay, so three by three does this. How many of those are there? One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, how many four by fours? One. All right. You notice a pattern about these yeah, numbers? Yeah, squares. And why do you think that's true? Because these are squares. <laughs> well, then, I mean, okay. Anybody can say that. But if you think about it, um, if I wanted to track these by their upper left corner, mm -hmm. the upper left corners of the one-by-ones are exactly this four-by-four four square. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why this number here is a square. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then so the upper left corners of the two-by-two two squares are here, here, okay. and so on, right? So just a little aside. <clears throat> okay, is that all the squares in yeah. the whole picture? No, there's one. Oh, yeah. yeah. You told me right at the beginning no. what the tricky part was, right? So let's start using, uh, what's a different color? Let's see here, we'll start using yeah, that pink. Way. Okay, now what are we trying to count? The diagonal squares. Okay, how are we going to count those? I'm not sure. You're not sure. Um... Well, basically, if a square is going to be diagonal, then it has to have a slope, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, we can count the diagonal squares by saying, okay, what are the possible slopes? Like, how, how much can they possibly be tilted? Well, so what's, what's an easy one? Okay, there you go. So, do you know the area of that thing? Um, yes. What is it? It's a, that, that's a 2 by 2 square. Two by two? Are you sure? Yes. Pythagoras would disagree. Pythagoras would say that is not two. Oh, uh, that's not two, I guess. So if this is two, the and this is two, this then Pythagoras would say this is two root two. Right? I'm okay. agreeing with Pythagoras this that's time. That's good. Um, there's a quick way to see the area, right? The uh, We could fit this bottom piece into this top piece, right? Mm -hmm. And there are two of those. So um, there's one that is uh, 2 root 2 by 2 root 2, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, the area here is 8. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Let's start using, a, okay, orange. We're going to use orange now. Um, we can make smaller diagonal squares, right? I know it may seem like I'm jumping around. 
No, what we're doing here is we're counting all of the squares that have slope exactly uh, 1 or negative 1, right? In other words, do you know slope? Yeah. Okay, so rise equals run. All right, so you remember how we counted the squares before using upper left corners? What's a convenient way to count these squares? Um... Centers? Yeah, exactly, right. I mean, it's not like you have to do it, but, you know, might as well be smart about it. So these nine points here in the middle are all going to be available to play the role of a center. Yeah. In one of these. So, um, we've got what? Disagree with Pythagoras. Nine. How big are these squares? Um... Those squares are one and one, one root two. Right. Okay. So root two by root two. So area two. Just I I can't help it. We got to go over here and review. Remember. If you have 45, 45, 90, mm -hmm. this is like x, x, and root 2, x. Uh -huh. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's what all those are. Uh, okay. Um, are there any more that have slope 1? No. I don't think so either. Okay. Run out of colors, but we'll find something. Light blue. Or you could just look on there or something. Sure. Here, let's do this. This one right here. That shows up pretty good. Okay, what's the next uh, tilt? So we've got we just we just counted all the ones that have that tilt. What's the next possible tilt? The unhappy tilt. Okay. All right. So uh, what slope is that? Um, is that even a square that I'm making? Nope. Do you know how to make perpendicular slopes? No. Okay. Or well, yes. Yes? Technically, how? yes. But Technically, yes. So how do you make a perpendicular slope? I tell you what, we'll do like a thicker line. So um, you drew... Something that's not a square. <laughs> let's do uh, uh, this color. You drew this. We'll do it even thicker. Um, you drew that line right there. Mm -hmm. What's the slope of that line? No... Rise is one, two. two. Run is one. one. So this has slope two. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know the perpendicular slope? How do Negative you find one it? Negative one half. Negative one half. All right, so that means we got to go uh, rise, we got to go down one, and then we got to go over two. Okay, so there you go. Okay. So that is going to be Your square. one of these squares. Uh, that has slope 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many of those are there? How many of those are there? There are... Two, I think. Two? More than that. Three, three. More. Wait. So I've got this one, mm -hmm. I can move it one to the left, and one down. I can move it one down, or I can move it down into the left. Okay, so three. Right? So in other four. words, um, if I want to look at the top left corner, mm -hmm. uh, all four of these, this can be the top left corner, this can be the top left corner, right? All four of these squares can be the top left corner. Okay. Okay? Uh, but wait, what about this square has uh, relatives? Right? Okay. Exactly. So, uh, so that there's four more relatives. Exactly. 
So let's draw one of those. Like so. Mm -hmm. Right? And so this square can I can put the corner there, I can put it there, I can put it there, or I can put it there. Mm -hmm. So what was that? Eight total? Yeah. Right? Uh so eight. And how big are those? Those are root five by root five. You can work that out on your own. Okay. Uh, in other words, they have area five. All right. Hmm. So. Are there any more? Maybe. I don't know. What's another possible slope? Two thirds. Two thirds. Okay. Well, uh, if I'm going to have a slope of two thirds, that means. Um, What's my side length going to be? I'm not sure. So if you have a slope of two thirds, let's just do it. So like that means we're dealing with like two and three, mm -hmm. right? So that would mean the side length here is root thirteen. That's not very nice. Okay. So that means the square would have area thirteen. Oh no. Right. And this whole picture only has area 16. Okay, so that, that should be mathematically convincing that it's probably not possible. Mm -hmm. But if you just think about, like, if I go over 3 and up 2, okay, well, there's my side. I've already thrown out too much area, right? Yeah. When I tilt it, it can't fit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you think of a number after 2? Um, one third? Sure, let's try one third. So that would be something like, uh, I'm going to go all the way back to white. Um, <clears throat> so the slope, if you want to say slope of one third, then I think here to Wait. here to there to there. Okay, and then this one has a relative, has exactly one relative, right? Flip. So two of them are root 10 by root 10, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so that's area 10. All right, have we left anything out? Um, don't think so. So let's go by area. We've got area one, uh, area, two. area two. Can we have area three? Probably. So if it had area 3, then its side length would have to be the square root of 3. No. Right? And you can't write 3 as a sum of two squares. You see what I'm saying? Um, okay. So 4, we're good. 5, we're good. Uh, 6, can you write 6 as a sum of two squares? Um, no. No. Do you see why I'm saying you have to write the sum of two squares? Because we know that the side lengths of these things have to be integers, right? So this is a, b, and then root a squared plus b squared. Mm -hmm. So I can't write 6 as no. a sum of two squares. Uh, 7, same problem, mm -hmm. right? 8, taken care of. 9, taken care of. 10, taken care of. 11, no chance. No. It's too weird. Um, 12. No. There's not so many no. squares, right? You, you only have 1, 4, and 9. Yeah. Right? So you... Um, okay, 12 doesn't work. 13. Is zero 13 square? does work. Huh? No, you can't have... Zero is <clears throat> zero squared. Did I skip right over 5? I guess maybe not. I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, well, zero, that would be a side length of zero. That's yeah, not, that's but is good. zero a square? Of course, zero okay. squared is zero. Um, okay, and then finally, um, 16. So all I'm doing here at the end is going through how you convince yourself that you found them all. Okay. Okay? Um, so let's just see what they do in the book. Uh, Oh, probably the same way.
how many squares of psi, how can we break, break even? So I just want to see how they do. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, they do exactly the same thing. Okay. Okay, great. Um, concept, they have this thing in the blue, <laughs> they have the blue box. When you resort to casework, you must be very, very careful. You should always try to find an organized way to work through your cases. Okay. Um, Oh, we didn't add, so what's 16 plus 9? 25. 4 plus 1 is 5. Uh, 1 plus 9 is 10. And 8 plus 2 is 10. 50. Great. 50 it is. 50. How many rectangles? Who knows? It's impossible. <laughs>